have to move on. Probably the attitude I'm sure you told them too, right? Well, I think when these kinds of things happen, the first concern you always have is for the guy. And uh, in this case, Mike's such a good man. He's worked hard to get to where he is. And so when that you get that word that, that the doctor says to you, you have a fractured patella and you're out for the season, well, that's pretty devastating for a young guy. You don't worry so much about the team. The team is, has this resiliency about them. And they'll come together and they'll form this this support system with one another and they'll be okay. But you worry about the kid, and in this case we're worried about Mike. And uh, he'll be okay, but you just it's a shame that he has to miss the rest of the season. Well, Randy Mark were a pretty tough guy to handle. Jefferson when he went man to man did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean Ronnie is a, he can do a real good job on a guy like Harper uh, because he has got some speed, quickness and length and but Justin Harper is a really talented offensive player and I thought we we guarded him about as good as we could have. Fran, what did you guys what did you guys know for sure that he was going to be out for you? Mike. Mike. Sorry, yeah. Wednesday. Okay. Yesterday. Hey, Fran, their matchup to give people so much trouble. Yeah. Didn't give you trouble. Well, I, it, we we I thought we moved our bodies as well as we moved the ball, and then we made shots and we made shots early, and it, 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 we got some confidence about ourselves. And when you make shots, it looks like you know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, be honest with you, I think their defense is really good. And I thought we, we played against it about as good as we could tonight. We made shots. And uh, I thought they had some open looks that they didn't convert. And that helped us. But uh, we played about our best basketball game of the year, I think, as I uh, await and make that decision after I watch the film later on tonight. But I thought we played about as good as we could play. Juan, Juan was one of those guys. Making shots. Yeah. Out. How, how do you, as a coach, even approach a slump? Ignore it. Don't yeah, talk about it. You do all, all sorts of things, and uh, you know. But you, you, he's a tough guy and a, and, uh, a talented guy, and those, that's a good combination. You know, he's going to eventually get out of it because he's had some. He's had a great deal of success in the past, and just kind of ride it out, you know. And luckily, we've had some other guys step up and do some good things, and so certainly we needed him. Tonight to have this kind of game that he had. Fran, so your kids. System. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah. Talk about the support system. They go to Dayton without the boy and win. Uh -huh. Big game tonight for you know second place and win. So yeah, I think it it speaks to the team. But I, as I said to you before, I think teams are resilient if they're good and if they're tough and if they're intelligent. And I think we have some real good ingredients with this group. And they just say, you know what, this guy's out. Somebody else has to pick it up and. And take his place. So Rallier did a really good job of that, and uh, really happy for him. But we had a night like tonight where Lavoy did not get himself into foul trouble, and he's such a rock back there defensively. And he's, you know, he has some blocks. He has three blocks. He has eight rebounds, and, and, but he's always in the right spot defensively. And he can't, we can't play too many minutes without him. So we, we got a long way to go yet. No, I don't think so. And he, he you know, it's the first time he's run much where the he got hurt. In the Fordham game, so that was last Wednesday, and uh, he hadn't run a whole lot since last Wednesday. So, but again, he's, he is a horse. He's a strong, strong guy. Friend, they cut it to five early in the second half, and yeah. you guys scored 16 points in under four minutes there. What did you see during that stretch, uh, offensively and defensively? You know what's funny? I, I appreciate the question, and we were we were struggling a little bit. Uh, I thought we made some bad decisions on shots and on passes <laughs> early in that second half, but. Like, Ralier has two field goals, but one of them might have been the field goal of the game where he drove it toward the baseline in front of our bench and finished the play. And really a huge, huge shot. And then Ramon Moore had a big three as well. I thought those two shots in particular really helped us. But we had a lot of guys making shots tonight. After Fernandez, um, Fran gets his second foul early. Yeah. Um, he played a, a bit of zone, maybe a lot of zone in the first half. Were they as comfortable? In zone as a guys? Man, your guys. Uh, we, we don't work at it enough to, to be real comfortable, but I think we were, I think it helped us. It, it, we knew that Juan was going to be in, but we also ran, uh, we also ran a little offense defense with him toward the end of the first half, just hoping he wasn't going to get his third. But yeah, I, I think they're comfortable, but it's not what we do. We're not, uh, unless we totally change our, our personality and our culture, we're, we're more man to man than anything. Just about any team I've ever coached, actually. Fran, do you um, do you still you know 
feel like you can catch Xavier? Is that a big deal to you, or as long as you get the bye and you're healthy and you can shake your jersey, that's, that's good enough? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Dan. I, I don't know any coach that thinks like that. We're, we're, right now, I'm going to go back into my office. I'm going to probably think about uh, how we play it again. We'll talk amongst the coaches a little bit, and then my and I'll watch this game and I'll think about how well we played and some of the things we can do a little better. And then, as soon as that'll that'll be done, hopefully by midnight, and at midnight to whatever until I go to sleep, which no coach sleeps. It's not that we do. I'll be watching St. Joe film and thinking about the St. Joe game. That's the only thing we can do, and the only focus we can have is the next task at hand. You, Fran, you got five, six really established players, and yet your pit part guys like Wyatt and Jefferson don't ever look afraid out there to assert themselves. Uh, I would think you'd be really happy with that because sometimes that well, doesn't happen. I appreciate it, and, and Jefferson. Uh, he's not afraid. He's played a lot of big minutes for us over the last two, uh, almost two years now. Wyatt, I don't, I, I don't think he's ever been afraid in his life, especially on the offensive end. He loves scoring the ball, so that's just what he does. But we get, I appreciate you saying that too, and TJ DeLeo made a couple of really nice yeah. plays today too, and he was tough, and he got rebounds, and he made a nice steal and a layup. And so we're getting contributions up and down the line, and if you're going to be good, that's what you have to do. So we're. We're in a nice stretch here, and we, but we got we got a long way to go. So with the, I mean, I know you're worried about you're thinking about St. Joe's on Sunday already, but you know Richmond's very much a, a bubble team. The a 10s had three bids the last three years. What kind of effect do you think that that perception as the a 10 as a multi-bid league, you know, comes into play in terms of teams maybe getting a little bit more leeway than the CAA team? In this case, I, I'd like to give you a really intelligent, profound answer, and I, I know this sounds boring, I know I'm a boring guy, but I'm thinking about St. Joe's on Sunday, it's the only thing we can do, you know, and uh, what's going to happen later on, how many teams are going to get in, it would be great if we got a lot of teams in, but I don't, I don't know any of that, that's not something I can control, but what I can control is how we approach this game on Sunday, and uh, that's what I'm worried about. And these guys moving forward are going to have to draw from the stretches of play that you guys have had when Mike has gotten into foul trouble in the past and say, hey, we've done this before, this is how it's going to look the rest of the year. Well, I, again, I think any good team calls on its experience, and we're, we're gaining some valuable experience at this point in the year, and uh, we need to be as tough as we can, as smart as we can. And, and a night like tonight, we stepped up and made shots. And, uh, we're not a, necessarily a 56% shooting team. That's not what we do, but I was proud of how we played the game tonight. Questions. Coach, you mentioned uh, new defensive sets and you talked about them a little bit. How do you see Mike's, uh, Mike's injury affecting what you're going to do defensively? Are you guys going to keep doing what you've been yeah, doing? Yeah, not, not a lot, not a great deal. We'll, we'll still be hopefully as solid as we can be, but you're, you're missing a you know, six foot ten of a, a big body out there. You know, and his presence we're missing. We're missing his personality. He's a good man. You know? And, and one, of, one of the things you try to guard against, too, is he's not going to be playing. And when you're not playing, you don't necessarily feel as much a part of the group. And so we'll have to massage that as best we can, too, to, to make sure he knows exactly how great he's been this year and how important he is to encourage all those guys that are getting his minutes now. Thanks, Coach.